Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be looking at Harry's filters right there, which is a very powerful set of filters, but also free, that works with most graphics programs like Photoshop Elements. If you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and of course share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. And also to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training courses and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right hand corner or in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Harry's Filters is a set of filters that has amazingly customizable see all the controls in here. There are a whole bunch of different filter sets, color, artistic, gradients, patterns, warp, noise, and so forth. Each one of these filter groups has a whole bunch of sub-filter sets as well, and each one of these is amazingly customizable. Harry's Filters installs as a plugin. Let me just cancel this, which you'll find over here under the filter menu. Down here it says the plugin site, and right there, Harry's Filters brings that up. We'll take a look at this in greater depth in just a minute, but first let me show you where I can find this. Let me bring up a, another window. Here we go. You'll find this at the plugin site right there, the plugin site. Easy enough to find that. This is the home of Elements XSL, which is a phenomenal plugin set for Photoshop Elements. Actually, it turns it into almost a, a Photoshop competitor. I mean, Photoshop was still better than anything else you can find, but this gets Elements as far as it will go. Only problem with Elements XXL is that it is rather expensive. So we'll look at this in a later video. Right now, let's look at the free stuff. Just go over here to Products, and on the right-hand side, section named Freeware, and Harry's Filters is the top one of these free options. Just click on that, and that takes you right into the Harry's Filters section. Just scroll down a little bit. Again, lots and lots of great stuff in here, and again, this is a free filter. It works with Windows XP, Vista, 7, 8, and 10, both 32 and 64-bit versions. Sorry, it doesn't work with the Macintosh then. So on a Mac, you can't use this, but it does work on Windows. And then right here is your download button for that. Okay, once you have this downloaded and installed, and during the installation, it's going to give you options to install this into all the programs that it can find that can run this filter set. Simply check the ones you want to install in and uncheck the ones you don't want to have this installed in. Okay, I went ahead and I installed this inside of Photoshop Elements 2018, and again, it shows up right down here. Let's just walk you through this a little bit. I'll start at the very top up here, color. What makes this so powerful is all of these adjustments in here. You can do almost anything you want with. You first select a basic group over here. We'll start off with color at the top. You then choose one of these options over here. Here's add color, cartoon art, colorize, color mode. Notice that each one of these has its own set of controls down here. And again, that's what makes this thing so powerful are all of these different controls. For instance, on the color wizard, you have three basic wizards. Going through these, you'll find different changes. It depends upon the image. What you'll see, you see right there, this is actually adding in a lot more red. Some of these wizards will work like this. It'll kind of pop in at a certain spot. Some of them will work in a more linear fashion. I'll just go here till it pops into the red. There we go. And this one, I can get some different looks in here. We're pulling this wizard across. I kind of like that look. Get some background showing in there. And then on wizard three, let's just see what this does. This brings in more greens. I'll leave that clear to the left end. And then adjust our color values. Go a bit more red on that. Right there. And a little less blue in there. Down below we have brightness control. Almost all the filters have a brightness control setting right here. So I'm doing right now is I'm using this one to get kind of a nice sepia tone effect. Where it says normal down here, this slider control controls the blending of this filter into your image. So if I pull this to the left, I get less of a blend. I can actually kind of blend the filter into my image. Like that. Clear to the right is pure filter. Clear to the left is pure image. And this allows you to blend the two together, get just the 
level that you want. You also can control your blending with different blend modes. There's a multiply blend mode, for instance, on this. Here's a screen blend mode. Here's a light and blend mode. There's a subtract, doesn't really look very good here. Here's a difference. Got an interesting op art look on that one. Here's a burn effect. Here's a soft light effect. So you have all these different blend modes as well, allowing you to blend this filter into your base image. So because of all these controls, it's just amazingly customizable what we can do with this. This really is one of those filter sets where it will take a bit of experimentation, but if you like to play around with things and have complete control, this is a great way to go. Now there's some fun little things right down here. This actually allows you to do kind of a little random slideshow or animation to see what this will do. I'm just click on the play button here. And it's just going to randomly go through and move these things around, but it gives you an interesting idea of the kind of effects that are available with this particular plugin. Now you can't save the animation. This isn't an animation program. It's just a way of getting a sense of what this particular filter will do. Let's just stop that. Where it says jump, this actually randomizes the settings. Just click on jump, it will go through and just do some random settings. If you see something which you like, you can then use that as a starting point to make some other fine-tune adjustments. So that, that's not too bad. Let's see what we do, a little more blue in here. Push it so the sky goes white. That's kind of nice. And a little bit of a red and green shift. So you can use the jump again to randomize and then go back to your controls. But you can see how customizable this whole thing is. Also down below, little help file right there. It's a very, very small help file. It doesn't give you a lot of information, but it gives you a little bit. The open allows you to open up presets. Click on that one and go over here to presets. The filters come with a whole big list, a whole set of presets in here. Let's just go take a look at this black and white touch preset. Choose open. That's in the artistic and black and white limiter pro and it puts in that preset. Let's just do one more of these in here. I'll scroll this down a little bit. We'll find something else. Here's a color posterize. Choose open and it puts in that preset. And again you can use the presets as a starting point for your adjustments. This one is an artistic color cocktail. And one more thing, you can save your own presets. Let's say you found one that you like, you've made some adjustments in here, you wanted to save those settings, just click on save. You can then save that as your own preset. Now what I did is I set up a new folder right there, custom presets, and I saved a few presets in here. Now that's easy to do. If you're just in their preset folder, just back up one step right there to the Harry's filters folder, make a new folder in here, and use that. I made a new folder which I call custom presets and I just saved a few presets in here. For instance, here's a sepia tone preset that I did. I just saved that on top of that sepia preset. So there you go. Easy as you can see here to work with this thing. To set in a filter, just click on OK and applies that filter. Click on cancel and it closes the filter without applying it. Now one thing I want to warn you about right here, this is the best spot for this, is if you apply the filter, click OK, it applies a filter to whatever layer that you're on. Notice right there, it just overwrote that background layer with that filter. So here's the way I like working with this set. Let's just undo that. Then we're back to our original. What I like to do is I like to take the background and make a duplicate of that and hide the original background. That way I can always go back to my original just in case things don't go the way I want. So always make a backup like your, uh, you know, of your original background here and then work on that copy. That also allows you to blend this into your original for even more control using these standard blend modes here inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, so there's the copy. Let's go back up to our filters, back to Plugin Site and Harry's filters. Let's just take a look through and see what some of these things can do. Starting off with color, we've already looked at the color wizard. Here's an exposure adjustment. You can adjust the amount of exposure right here just to lighten things up and then adjust your brightness down below and let's set this back to normal in the blend mode. Let's go to overlay or we can go to multiply 
and different options in there will allow you to do some real nice ex basic exposure settings in here just by controlling these and controlling the different settings over here, your different blend modes. And that's just one setting here on color. Let's go up here to add color and I'll set this at normal again and with this I can just add in color into the image. Let's go to the left quite a ways here. So I'm brightening up the image a lot right down there with the brightness control and then we can adjust the amount of color and this all you know works kind of like a photo filter where you can add in different color adjustments or color overlays just by adding on color. Let's come down one more here. Let's come down to artistic. Lots of interesting things in here. Atmospherizer, blurry painting effect. Here's the black and white limiter pro actually brings in black and white into an image kind of blend the two together. Color cocktail does this kind of unusual thing. Now again all these have different levels of controls in here. You have to play with your controls to get your different effects. There's an on off control actually for this little invert thing. And I can control the amount of colors. There's the blue, a little more green in here, a little more red on that. So all kinds of interesting effects. Once you have that done, then come down and choose different blend modes and you can blend those that color effect into your actual picture and adjust your lightness in here as well. Crochet art puts on kind of a pattern effect in here. Let's move down here. We have different gradients that can be applied. I'll just go through a few of these. And it's there you go, kind of see the effect being applied in there. Now this is on multiply, so if I put this back to normal, you'll see just that gradient. You can then bring that gradient into your picture by using these different blend modes to actually bring that into your image. There's a framing effect in there. Interesting quad beam effect kind of thing. See over there? Let me set this back to normal on this. These are really complex kinds of gradients that you can play around with in here. Again, a line for all kinds of very interesting controls. Here's a star. Here's a spiral effect, which is kind of fun. You can zoom in or out on the spiral effect and then blend that or not into your picture if you want to. Again, lots and lots of different things you can do on these. Different patterns you can apply in here. All kinds of different patterning effects. Thing called raspberry is kind of fun. Let me just go back to normal. And on this one, which is kind of a pop art effect, and I can control this, but it's controlling these sliders in here, and I can control the amount of color right there. And once you find something which you like, you can then blend this into your image. Just a little dodge in there, or a little exclusion effect, all kinds of things that are available in here for doing some interesting kind of special effects on this thing and this is in the patterns section. We need to warp all kinds of different warp effects. Here's a swirl effect. You actually kind of swirl your image like that. Here's a little, little waving effect in here. The wave part of this is very similar to the wave filter inside of Photoshop Elements except that this actually is controllable with a preview whereas the wave filter in Elements you don't have that ability. This is more of that, that wave effect in here. Sometimes useful as a part of a different special effect. Here's a tile glass effect, which is kind of interesting to actually come in here and make these little tiles and adjust the amount of reflection on the tiles. There's also a picture chopper right here, which you can use to give kind of a picture chopped effect. This is very much like the glitch effect that is much more difficult to create inside of Photoshop Elements using these standard tools. Real easy here inside of Harry's filters. Now one thing about this, especially on this glitch effect, some of these kind of warping picture adjusting effects, these are shown how it looks on the preview window here but we're previewing this at 16%. You can adjust your preview size by clicking those little up and down arrows. Let's go up here to 
100%, I can then see how much of a glitch is actually happening here at 100%, and then adjust my glitch amount, in this case the chop factor, with those slider controls. Then click on OK, and it applies that effect. There's that glitch effect. Real easy to do here using the Harry's filters. And again, I have this on the new layer up here, so I haven't touched my background. Let's just undo that and go back to our filters again here. Plug inside Harry's filters. And again, it goes back to fit in window. Whatever the size of your image is to fit it inside this window, that's the default setting. So there's lots of these different warp effects in here. There's different noise effects, circular noise, grain effects, kind of a, what they call it, nail art effect in here, noisy blur effect, noise reducer effect, and a digital cutter effect. Some other different special patterning effects in here, which are kind of fun. Again, all of these, you can come in here and make just a huge, unlimited, practically, range of adjustments using these different slider controls. Some work out great, some don't. It really depends upon the particular control and, of course, on the basic image. Let's come down more here. We have some other miscellaneous effects in here. Convolver effect. This actually can be used to give you some nice drawing styles in here. By just moving these around, there we go. Kind of an offset effect. And very similar to a couple of different filters that are standard inside of Photoshop Elements. This one's getting close to the Find Edges filter. And this is more like the Emboss filter. But by playing with these, you can come in and actually get kind of a drawn effect in here. Get those kind of drawing effects just by playing around with these different controls. There we are beginning to get that now. More of a hand-drawn look. Looks like right about there. A pretty good colored pencil drawn effect on that using that one. And again, lots of things in here. Here's an overpainting effect, quadrant flip effect, little streamer thing, little motion effect in here. Here's kind of a zoom type effect thing. And then some nature effects at the very, very bottom of our list. There's a flame thing, a lightning effect, which I can't really see there. Polar light effects. See if we can see more of these polar lights in here. I'll bring the intensity up. There we go. Kind of a, a lens flare effect with color in here. You can adjust the size on that, and you can adjust the coloration in here. Little color effects. Supernova, kind of an unusual effect, and a tornado effect as well. So as you can see here, just a huge range of possibilities using these different filters. And at, also, as you can see here, the amount of adjustment or possibilities here is practically endless with all these controls. So a lot of these effects are similar to a lot of the effects that are available as filters inside of Elements, but the level of control is what really makes this a great tool. And again, it's free. I mean, you can't really go wrong with a free set of filters like this. So there you go. Harry's Filters. Let me bring up that website one more time. There it is. Go to the plugin site and over to Products, and your free stuff is right here. At the very top, that's the Harry's Filters. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the Like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.